to you guys in our morning show, your Friday edition, where this morning, as the music was saying, we are getting to splash in the sea water a little bit. Joining us this morning is Mr. Eric Mackey, the regional coordinator for the ODPM. As today, we're going to be chatting about the World Tsunami Day 2021 organization. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. <laughs> now, we would have spoken a little bit before the break to understand yeah. that today is, in fact, World Tsunami Correct. Day. Yeah. And what do we need to know in preparation for that? Since in my lifetime, we haven't had one in Trinidad. <laughs> right, a, a tsunami is a, a rare event, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> it's low probability, but when it happens, it's a very high impact event. Okay. It affects uh, the coastlines of countries. Uh, if, if Trinidad and Tobago, for example, was to be affected by a major tsunami, all of the Eastern Caribbean would likely be affected by the same tsunami. Mm. It's not a small, thing you know it, it travels rapidly from one place to another so it's, it is very very dangerous if it happens uh, Mr. Mackie, I, I know your, your history your your bit you're a better man right here yeah, TTT, yeah. right <laughs> but tell me something what exactly is a tsunami like what causes a tsunami to happen okay well there, there are different um, stimuli that could cause it but the most recent the most common is a major earthquake Okay. The earthquake would have to be of a magnitude greater than seven and um, shallow at shallow depths, less than 100 kilometers in the sea. Okay. If it's on the land, the probability of earthquake of a tsunami is reduced considerably, if not eliminated altogether. Oh, okay. And you're saying that if a big one was to happen, it would be somewhere, sh let's say it happened somewhere shallow outside of the Eastern Caribbean. The entire thing would be affected. Well, the, the, yes, there, there are three types of tsunamis. There's a, what's known as a local tsunami, a regional tsunami, and a tele tsunami. A local tsunami is one that happens within a hundred, was when an earthquake happens within a hundred kilometers of our coastline, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? When that happens, under 20 minutes, the first waves will come ashore. Right. Right. It's a sudden onset event, and that's why it's so important for the the population living on the coastline and within a couple miles of the coastline to understand this. Mm -hmm. Because if you feel the earth start to shake violently for a long time, right, as soon as it stops shaking, drop everything and head inland. That's the most important thing you could do. Head as far inland as you can to get away from the incoming waves. I remember years ago, uh, there was, I don't know if it was a tsunami or what, but there was a, a huge wave that hit, I think it was Maracas Bay. And right. it came up a lot higher than anybody expected it to. And, you know, people were saying, oh, tsunami, tsunami. Was that a tsunami? No. It, well, not in the strictest sense of the word in that it wasn't generated by an earthquake. Right. Uh, if it was a uh, tsunami generated by an earthquake, uh, the damage would have been much more severe mm -hmm. and much more extensive. Right. Right. Um, it was more generated by a, a winter storm system up in the North Atlantic that pushed um, big waves south. So when we're talking tsunamis, are there actual measurements that we would use to describe a, or, or justify one, qualify yeah, one rather yeah, as being you, a tsunami? Yeah, you measure the, the tsunami wave height, mm -hmm. right? Um, and it can vary from 0 0.01 meter all the way up to 5 meters plus, right? A, a 0 0.01 tsunami is going to create little if any effect at right. all. Anything from one to three meters to and up is trouble. Oh boy. <laughs> because now there's one thing I'm, uh, people have to understand. A tsunami wave is very different from an ocean wave. Yeah. An ocean wave rushes up, comes ashore, and it goes back out. Mm -hmm. A tsunami wave has a ve is very, very, very broad. So while a, a, a normal wave on the ocean has about a seven second period or interval between the front and the back, mm -hmm. A tsunami could have as much as a five kilometer wow. interval. So you have five kilometers of water rushing ashore yeah. at the same time. Yeah. And it takes it doesn't just crash and go back out. No. It keeps going and going and going and going until eventually the back end passes. That's what makes it so dangerous. Are there are there parts of Trinidad that are more susceptible to, to getting tsunamis? So like I'm I'm thinking of the op the parts that are open to the wider ocean, like the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, that that side of things right uh, the north coast and the east coast uh, the, the primary targets right. and of course the whole of Tobago hmm. right right um, but depending on where the tsunami is coming from 
it can enter enter the Gulf of Paria through either the north or the, or the south. south. Oh boy, um, I'm still I'm still taken aback by that five kilometer because yeah. I run a cut well walked a five k. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a very long <laughs> distance. It is. So that actually in my mind now makes a lot more sense as to how much damage that can take place with a tsu yeah. tsunami wave as opposed to regular wave just crashing. And mm. I'm I'm shook. <laughs> <laughs> and very concerned for my brethren, um, even my father out there in Guayaguay and Mayaro, because right. these are areas that are going to be yeah. very, very, very susceptible. Heavily impacted. Yeah. Oh yeah. boy. There are yeah. floods and the tsunami will run for Right, and of course, Tobago would Tobago. be yeah. no The whole of Tobago. The whole of Tobago. <laughs> Tobago, <laughs> Tobago, <laughs> Tobago, you know. So, so Tobago Tobagonians have to evacuate yeah. if a tsunami hit, basically. They can't stay in Tobago. There's nowhere they can go to. Yeah, no. Um, once you get uh, the 100 foot contour line, mm. that's. A, that's a internationally recognized as a safe zone. Okay. Okay. Right? Okay. So you need to know where Just the hundred foot high. contour is. Yeah, you're evacuating upwards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You if you're downtown, you can evacuate it upwards in buildings, tall buildings, anything above uh, three or four stories. Really? Okay. But right. wouldn't that be dangerous if you were to get caught in there? Yes, it would. It, but it's, it's try you, you try your best, you know, in right. the circumstances you do your best. Yeah. Tell us about, about the outreach that's happening today down in Mayaro. Okay, so um, we have a crew heading down to Mayaro right now. Uh, we're going to be set up at the Mayaro Junction, just outside the market. Mm -hmm. We'll have a booth there. We're going to be giving out flyers and stuff like that, and um, and uh, speaking with people to educate them about the dangers of tsunami. We also have an, uh, some literature to distribute to the Republic Bank, to Nalis, and the uh, Mayaro Secondary School. So are you all going to other today? coastal villages as well, or are you just sticking to Mayaro? It's difficult to do them all at once, you know, so yeah. we, we, we do it in stages. Right. What we're doing right now, actually, is that we've started a pilot project uh, for to make all the coastal communities tsunami ready. Right. The pilot project was in Carnage in 2019. Yes. Right. So Carnage is now recognized internationally as being tsunami ready. Okay. Good having job. gone through a series of training right. and stuff like that. Okay. 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 Yeah. And, and so you're going to implement that into other communities going forward. Uh, we in the, the intention is yes that we eventually the whole of Trinidad and all of Tobago will be tsunami ready. Fingers crossed, because whew, that information <laughs> hit me like a tsunami right now. <laughs> I'm still not over that fast. And in terms of these areas, if you are not familiar with the Mayaro area, that junction that you're talking about, less than five minutes walk, it's beach. Yeah, yeah, right, <laughs> so yeah. it's but every Mayaro like that though, less than five minutes walk <laughs> is the beach. <laughs> kind of, pretty much, pretty much. So that's really important. And in terms of weather and time of the year, we know this is not necessarily a seasonal thing. It has, no, it depends not. more on the earthquake probability. Right, so we definitely need that information all year round. I have a question. Uh, you know, you're a former weatherman, so oh I boy. can ask you anything when it comes to these kind of things, <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm curious as to if climate change has an effect on, on this or not, on, okay. the, on the frequency of earthquakes, on the, uh, the mm. possibility of tsunamis. No, no, there isn't any, any sort of data to indicate that at all. Okay. The weather and the earthquakes are two totally separate phenomena. Good morning to my geography teacher, because yeah. I remember yeah, <laughs> that the tectonics it is play tectonics. tectonics. Yeah. Shifting, yeah. And so that has more to do with exactly. But I was, I was curious as to, you know, we, we've been seeing all these changes happening globally when it comes to the climate, and it's been affecting so many things. Uh, mm -hmm. So I was, just, I was just curious as to if yeah. it may. No. There's a, an old time thing, as how, you know, as on a hot day, the people would used to say that there's earthquake weather, but yeah. but that's not that's not related. Thank at you all. for dispelling that myth. What's I, was, I, was, I, was, I was wondering. I always hear that they hear it. if it's real hot and then it starts to rain, chances are we're gonna get an earthquake. And I'm like, I'm like, what? Who is a little one of us? I didn't get this in school. What is about? So that thank you very much for dispelling that myth, turn on to me. Sometimes it's just hot. This <laughs> and then it just rains. Yeah. That's how that goes. No All right, guys, so you want to head down to Mayaro by the junction and get as much information as you can today from the ODPM because tsunami awareness is real and you need to make sure that you um, get all the information that you possibly can get. And remember to be safe, mask up, social distance, but collect the information, read the information. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you so much, Eric Mackey, for joining us this thank morning. Thank you for having us. Thank you for sharing all this information with us. Mm -hmm. I think we learned a lot and I'm sure Trinidad and Tobago learned a lot as well. Yeah.
We, yeah, feel free to ask us to come back anytime. Oh, we always will. We always will. We love working with the ODPM. And we're going to continue to help you guys spread the yeah. information as much as possible. And yeah. congratulations on the work that you guys have been doing. Because mm -hmm. we've definitely noticed. And we've had you guys on the show quite a few times. And mm. the information is always great. And um, appreciate we appreciate it. you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank Eric Markley, the regional coordinator of the ODPM. Stay tuned. We still have more coming up on the Now Morning Show. Mm. Yeah.